Hi, my name is Andy Peters. I have a lab at the University of Oxford, and today I'll be talking about the NeuroPixels Trajectory Explorer, which is a tool for planning NeuroPixels trajectory and also for seeing where you're recording in a live format. In order to get the software, you can do so through the GitHub page. There will be a link provided. On this GitHub page, you can download all the software you need. There's also a wiki that has written instructions on how to use it. There's two ways to launch this GUI. One is through MATLAB if you have access to that. The other is through standalone. So if you don't have MATLAB, you run this as an EXE and you can run it on any computer. If you run this through MATLAB, you do so by typing NeuroPixels Trajectory Explorer and then that pulls up the GUI, which looks like this. There is a wrap version of this, but it's not supported at the moment. So today I'll just be talking about the mouse version. This is all based off of the mouse Allen Common Coordinate Framework at Atlas. Okay, so I'll take you through the basic features of this GUI. In the center here, we've got the brain. So the gray is the outline of the CCF Atlas. The blue is your probe. So in this case, it's a NeuroPixels 1.0 probe, one shank. The red is showing the trajectory along which your probe is moving. Up here in the top left, you've got some coordinates. So it shows the probe angle. This is an azimuth left to right, an elevation up and down. It shows the insertion point, which is the point and depth at which your probe intersects the brain. So these here are the coordinates, AP and ML, where you actually go into the brain, and this is the depth along that trajectory that you're going in. The next down here are the recording top and tip. So this is the top and tip of your NeuroPixels probe. Down here, we've got the Bregma Lambda distance. So this is the distance between these two points on the skull for your given animal. On these bottom left buttons here, you can change the perspective on the brain. So you can do this by clicking and moving the brain, or you can hit these buttons to give you different perspectives. And on the right, we've got the probe areas that this selected probe is going through. Okay. So I'll take you through the general controls up here and what they all do. First of all, if you hit probe controls, then we have a list of options for setting our probes. So for example, if we know where our probe is going to go, we can hit set entry and we can type in coordinates and it moves the probe to that particular position. We can add and remove probes if we want more than one. So in this case, we can add a new probe. If we want to get rid of a probe, we can click on it and hit remove. Okay, so these are the general probe controls. There's also a few general ways to move the probe, so I'll just go through those quickly. You can press the arrow keys to move the probe anterior or posterior and left and right. If you hold the shift key while pressing the arrow keys, what that does is move the angle of the probe anterior and posterior and left and right. If you hold the alt key and press up and down, that moves the depth of the probe along this trajectory. Brain scaling. If your animal is larger or smaller than the average, then you can change the size of this atlas. So the default here is 4.1 millimeters. If you have a very large mouse, let's say, we can set this to some large number, in this case, 10 millimeters. Uh, now you can see that the brain is much larger compared to the probe as previously. So we'll put this back to the standard, which is 4.1. 3D areas, what this does is it lets you see 3D areas across the brain. So there's many different ways you can search for these. In this case, let's try the search areas. So we're going to try looking at a trajectory between the primary visual cortex and the lateral geniculate nucleus. So here we'll look for the primary visual. You don't need to type in the entire thing. We have a broken down by layers or the whole area itself. So we'll click that. And what this does is it draws the primary visual cortex. All right, next thing we'll do is add the lateral geniculate. We'll just type in lateral gen in this case, and it pulls up all the matches. So we'll click this first one, which is the dorsal LGN. Okay, so now on the brain, we've got drawn the primary visual cortex and the uh, LGN. All right, display here. Uh, on this first option, in this case, what we're seeing in these probe areas on the right is where your probe is currently. If we want to see all the areas along the trajectory, we can go to trajectory areas and full trajectory. Now it's showing you where your probe is along this entire trajectory. So if we move the probe down, we can see that this moves down. 
The point of this is to let you see what you're going to hit before you hit it. Put this back. All right, we can also change the region names. So at the moment, they're the acronyms. If you want to see the full name, you can click on that and get the whole thing. We can also display a slice through the atlas along the axis of our probe. So if we display slice, we have two choices. The anatomical, which shows us the anatomical slice going through the probe. This changes with your perspective whenever you turn the brain. We can also see the annotated version. So this is not the, um, the anatomy, but this is the parcellated anatomy. Okay, we can also turn objects off and on. So for example, we can have a grid. We can turn the brain off. Anything that we want to turn off and on can be done through this bottom objects. All right, so let's plan a trajectory through these two regions. Often the easiest way to do that is to pick two perspectives and then set your probe in those accordingly. So in this case, if we want to go through both the primary visual cortex and the lateral LGN, uh, and the dorsal LGN, we can, for example, go to the sagittal view and move our probe backwards by hitting the down area until we intersect with the visual cortex. And then we can change the angle by holding shift and pressing up. What this does is it moves the probe forward until you can see it intersect with the LGN. All right, so let's say we like that as our general um, sagittal trajectory. Now we can flip our view to coronal and bring this left until it intersects with these structures. And again, we can hold shift and press right to change the angle until we're happy that it's going through both of these things. Okay, so now if we look at this in 3D, we can see that our probe is going through both the primary visual cortex and the lateral and the GLGN. We can also hold Alt maybe to lower our probe a little bit farther to get a little bit more of the brain. Okay, so in this particular trajectory, we're hitting both the primary visual cortex and the LGN, which can be seen over here on the probe areas. So the top of your probe is in the air, then you hit the primary visual cortex, then the hippocampus, and then the LGN is down here, and then the VPN thalamus is below it. Okay, so let's say that this is the trajectory you wanna go for. In real time, if you use the new scale MPM manipulators, you can see where you are. So in this case, I'll put this off to the side here and I'll pull up the new scale software. So if you have the software, you can connect to it by hitting connect, going to manipulator, and then hitting new scale MPM. Okay, so now the Neuropixel Trajectory Explorer is talking to your manipulator. So if you're familiar with the system, then you can move the probe using these coordinates and you can see whenever I move the probe, on the physical system, the NeuroPixels Trajectory Explorer also moves. So in this case, let's say we have a coordinate we want to go to. Let's say uh, we're going for basically the same trajectory as we had a minute ago. Then we can move our probe to that point, and we see it moving in both the manipulator and also in the Trajectory Explorer. And then let's say we want to insert our probe, if you hit go, then you'll see your probe slowly start to move into the brain. Uh, and once we get into the brain, we'll start seeing these areas um, uh, be populated. So you can keep an eye on this uh, while you're actually doing your experiment, and then you can compare this to recordings you're getting to make sure you're in the right place. Okay, so this is the interfacing with the manipulator. Now, once we're in the brain, if we want to compare our areas that we're looking for, to um, our recordings, then we can also connect these to recording software. So if you go to recording software here, we have two options, both open EFIS and Spike GLX. So to get some more areas, let's just move our probe deeper into the brain. All right, so uh, in open EFIS, your recording will look something like this. So open EFIS shows these areas through the probe viewer. So let's say I'm doing my recording, looks something like this. If I connect to open EFIS, now the trajectory explorer is going to send these areas to probe viewer so that you can see where you are and compare that to the responses you're getting and check whether they're what's expected. All right, if you, instead of open EFIS, use spike GLX, 
it does a similar thing. So let's say your Spike GLX system looks like this. If you do connect Spike GLX, now it's talking to Spike GLX. You can see the areas in this shank viewer here. So in this case, it's showing you all of the areas. This can be helpful, for example, if you want to select certain sites on your probe going through a particular area. It'll show you where, at least in the trajectory explorer's point, you should be. So you should know what to select. OK, so that is a general overview of the NeuroPixels Trajectory Explorer. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions in the Slack. Also, if there are any issues or upgrades that are desired in the future, please open an issue on GitHub, and I will address it as soon as possible. Thank you very much.